Every time I make a press, I test it with a print. This particular press is going to an artist who commented when he bought it from me that he was interested in fine line etchings and dry points in the manner of Rembrandt. And so for his test, I decided to do a little dry point and etching combination to suit his style. I'll be using Charbonnel black etching ink today with a little bit, a, a drop or two of plate oil. This is number zero zero burnt plate oil. I might use some talcum powder if my hands get too sweaty. And I'll be printing on paper that's been in this damp book now for several hours this morning. I might warm the plate periodically on this hot plate, which is actually an iron uh, on its back, so that I can get some uh, warmth on my plate to make the ink softer. To get started, I'll put out a little bit of ink. I'll use a spatula to work the ink up a little bit before I start. I'm going to put one drop of this burnt plate oil in just to make it softer. The more oil you put in the ink, the more tone will result. And here we go with inking up the plate. This is a little piece of rolled up felt. Felt that's been rolled up in a little tube. This is called a dolly by the French, which I think the word for dolly is la poupée. So this is called inking the plate à la poupée. Now because it's a dry point, I have to wipe the whole thing very carefully, especially since it's such a delicate drawing. You can just barely see it coming up. It's a man with a baseball cap and he's looking down at something that he's writing. The man's name was Dale. Unfortunately, Dale passed away last year. So this is a kind of a memorial to Dale at the Cafe Vida in Seattle. Now, as I was saying, it's a dry point very lightly etched and dry pointed into the plate with, an e with a needle so there's hardly any texture at all for the ink to hang on to. So the wiping has to be done gingerly. Dry point is a technique, it's quite simple, it's merely scratching on the plate. This plate probably will yield only about 10 proofs and that is if I'm very careful and don't wear out the plate. The reason is that dry point only throws up a burr in the metal and that burr of metal can wear down. Now as my hand gets a little greasy from the oil and the ink, I need to use a little bit of talcum powder. Oops, that's way too much. But just to kind of keep my hand uh, to, to, to not have it so oily and sticky. But when I use talcum powder, I have to be careful not to use too much talcum powder and actually get the talcum powder dust into the ink. This wiping technique, by the way, is called the hand wipe for obvious reasons. And I believe in French they call it coup de main. This is only the second proof I've made of this plate. We call these early proofs the trial proofs. Clean my hands, remove my gloves. I'm going to warm the plate just slightly and get my paper out. This paper is called Arch Satin or Satin. It's a white paper and as I said it was soaked in water and then put in this damp book with newsprint interleaving just to kind of make it soft and pliable. The mini half wood press 
is designed to use two felts called a roller felt and a sizing catcher felt. The rollers are an inch and a half in diameter and you adjust the pressure with these pressure screws. I start out by taking it all the way down to the press bed, the flat thing, or platen, and then I count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about. That gives me room to start the felts under the roller. And then when they're under the roller, I tighten it back down. One, two, three, until I can barely turn it anymore. That's nice and tight. The plate itself is only 20, is 22 gauge, very thin, less than a 32nd of an inch thick. And then I place the paper. and turn it through the press. I like to go slowly. I think I get a better print if I go slowly. I can feel the resistance of the plate and the paper. People are often surprised at how much pressure which they can feel when they turn the wheel. And there's the first proof. I always put on what I call a moment number. The moment number is the moment the print was printed. This is 2009, January 30th, and it is 11.50 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now all I need to do is clean the plate. Odorless mineral spirits, or odorless paint thinner, and then along with the print I will bag it along with other little artifacts that were made that I used in making the etching that will go to the owner so they can have evidence of how the print was made and maybe even try to copy the method. Along with that will go the DVD called the One Minute Printmaker and also the DVD showing this safe, same test. The owner also gets the owner's manual, a little book which is a kind of a birth certificate for the making of this exact press. The owner gets an Allen wrench just in case the wheel ever works its way loose and the owner gets a little test plate a brand new piece of copper to test and two postcards the box itself comes with the press and has a certificate of authenticity pasted to the underside of the lid the owner gets brand new felts. I'll take out the old test bed that I use and replace it with a brand new bed. Finally, the owner gets the book, Halfwood Press, The Story. The story of the making of and selling of the first 30 mini Halfwood presses. It all goes in a box, bolted down to a shipping board. And that goes into the cardboard box, and I'll send it to Hawaii today.